USC doesn't end their 2010 football season on a losing streak. Instead, the Trojans defeat the rivals from across town. But all in all, another disappointing year for USC. Hello everybody, welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm Jonathan Camus, being joined by our USC beat writer Michael Lev. So USC doesn't end on a losing streak. They pick up a victory against their crosstown rival UCLA 28-14. But this is the worst season USC has had since 2001. That was when Pete Carroll had the team at 6-6. Six and six. Your quick assessment of the UCLA game. Yeah, well, I mean, it wasn't a pretty game. Uh, you know, USC, was. they had a lot of injuries heading into the game in the secondary. The quarterback was hurt. It was a game where they just sort of had to grind it out. And the difference was that the offensive line showed up and they turned the ball over to a very motivated and determined Allen Bradford. Mm -hmm. And he was, he, he came, made all, he was the difference maker in the game. He came out of nowhere, um, you wanted him to start, and he proved it that, you know, he can go out with a bang. Not to toot my own horn, but I did call <laughs> for it, yes, Improve, uh, yeah. earlier in the week. Um, but yeah, he, he ran hard. Um, like I said, he ran with great determination. Um, you could tell he was just giving it all he had in his final game. He made big plays. Uh, he, he made first downs. Where was and that it was, it was this week, So I mean, Mark Tyler was getting a lot of the run. I thought Bradford was kind of ailing, but he looked really healthy uh, Saturday. He did. I really think the offensive line had a lot to do with it. It was the most, probably the most inconsistent unit uh, on USC this year, and it really sort of determined how well the offense would perform. You know, when the, when the offensive line uh, opened holes for the running game, it sets up everything else. When they didn't, the offense struggled. Matt Barkley was kind of iffy going into that game. He has some problems, but uh, through a couple picks, you could tell he wasn't healthy. Should he have played? I think yes. Um, he was able to do enough. Um, just having his presence out there alone, I think, was a big deal. There's certain throws he can make that Mitch Mustaine just couldn't. Mm -hmm. There was one key third down conversion where Matt just threaded the ball into traffic. I mean, it was yeah. a risky throw, but with his arm strength, he could pull that off. Um, he wasn't sharp, he wasn't as mobile as usual, um, but it was good enough to get the job done. Let's talk about Matt Barkley, let's assess his uh, sophomore year. I know you like to look at the touchdown-interception ratio, and he certainly improved on that, but the last couple games of the season he kind of tailed off. What are your thoughts on his season? Yeah, I mean, it was an improvement. Was he ready to take that next step? That's the question. Is he really ready to go uh, from being a good player to a consistently great player? We saw it at times this season. Uh, but as you mentioned, he tailed off down the stretch. I mean, his last five games, his touchdown to interception ratio was only six to eight. Yeah. Um, that's not the strong finish he was seeking. So the goal for next year is, you know, let's do this from week one through week 13. Yeah, and I think he'll do that. I think his junior year will be Matt Barkley's breakout season, but we will have to wait to find out. Before we preview next season, we're going to go ahead and recap what we just saw. We're going to go ahead and give our grades out here, Michael, our very high quality style grades here you know very well paid for and uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the offense first I'm gonna go ahead and give the offense a B uh, ups and downs this year I think Matt Barkley showed some improvement when he wasn't trying to be the old gunslinger there and I uh, liked what I saw out of the tailbacks Bradford and Mark Tyler yeah I'm also gonna go with a B uh, for the offense just inconsistent as I mentioned um, some games they were great those were A games. Yeah. Some games, they weren't very good at all. Some C's in there, some D's in there. I think you sort of combine it all together. I think it's a solid B. Okay, defensively now, let's talk about the defense for the Trojans. Uh, did not think, well, I'm going to give them a C, first of all. Did not think they stepped up in the biggest of games. I think uh, the big games kind of got to them, especially third down defense. That was very disappointing. Yeah, I'm also going to go with a C, and they were kind of on track for a D. I wow. think until improving at the end of the season, even though they lost two of the last three games, they were really about the most consistent stretch that we saw from them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give special teams a C. Uh, their kicking game was pretty much non-existent all year, but I did like what I saw out of Ronald Johnson returning some punts. Yeah, I'm going to go with a B. Um, I mean, you can't discount the fact that they had a bunch of block kicks. Some of them were very influential in games. Mm -hmm. Uh, they improved a lot under first-year special teams coach John Baxter in pretty much all areas. Let's talk about the coaching staff. Brand new coaching staff. I'm going to give them a C. You might think it's a little harsh, but at USC, they have high expectations. And uh, with a limited amount of players, I thought they did an okay job. I predicted they'll go 8-5, and five, but I'd like to see some improvement going on next year. Yeah, this was the hardest grade for me to, to figure out. I was okay. kind of torn between a B and a C, and I ultimately am going to go with a C. Very difficult circumstances entered into by this coaching staff. Um, you know, you had the sanctions, um, which sort of, you know, removes that, that carrot for, for everybody the whole season long. We saw it with basketball mm -hmm. uh, a year ago, and we saw it with football. It's sort of hard to 
keep yourself motivated. Lost a bunch of players as a result of the sanctions. Uh, your new coaches, new systems, all, all kind of new stuff in a transition year. And also, you know, following Pete Carroll, I mean, the most successful coach in yeah. the decades. Tough to do. Very difficult circumstances, but there were a bunch of games that they could have won right. and didn't. So that's the reason I went with the C. Yeah, that late game clock management with those game-winning field goals really killed them. Um, let's look into the crystal ball here, Michael. I'm not talking about your bald head. I'm talking about the crystal <laughs> ball. Sorry, I just had to do it's that. Okay. Last show, I had to. That's okay. Um, uh, let's talk about some of the recruits that are coming to USC. They're getting a lot of big-name talent, a lot of uh, four-star, uh, three-star talent, and, and especially out here from the OC. Yeah, guys that you're very familiar with. Yes, I know I from having seen them several times. I mean, uh, you got the, the pitch and catch combo from Modern Day and Max Wittick and Victor Blackwell coming. That's right. Uh, and they were just eliminated from the playoffs mm -hmm. this past week by Trey Madden. Another USC Dejo, commit. Diablos, yeah. And Trey Madden was probably the best player in the field uh, in that game. I mean, I'm interested to hear. I mean, what are your, some of impressions of those I, guys from I, having seen them all Yeah, year? I really like Blackwell. I think this guy is going to be an impact receiver at USC. Uh, will he play right away? That remains to be seen. But he's definitely going to be a player to look out for. Max Wittick is a guy that's going to be a bit of a project. Give him a couple years. But Trey Madden, like you mentioned, a lot of coaches have called him the best player in the county. You can use him at Wildcat. You can use him at linebacker. And I guess USC might, might end up doing that, right? Yeah, they're going to probably use him at weak side linebacker based on his build. Um, he's, he said he's about 218 pounds, looking to get up to about 225. And that is a huge area of need uh, with Malcolm Smith graduating and going on to the NFL. We didn't even uh, mention DeAnthony Thomas. He's a good one. The Black Mamba, they call him. But uh, let's go to our reader question of the week. And this one comes from Mace. He asks, uh, who will be replacing Rojo at receiver next year, and does Kyle Prater look to have the advantage? Yeah, I think going into spring, uh, you know, they're probably going to be looking at some of the incumbents, you know, Bryce Butler, who's really been kind of inconsistent and a little bit of a disappointment so far in his USC career. Brandon Carswell is a guy who's an excellent blocker and possession receiver, but I really think that if Kyle Prater stays healthy, continues to work hard, he's going to overtake both of them. Mm -hmm. He's going to be that big receiver that Lane Kiffin likes to have in his system, like a Mike Williams, like a Dwayne Jarrett, mm -hmm. who will be a great complement to Robert Woods. And I really think those two can form a dynamite one-two combo at wide receiver. Robert Woods, we got to mention, the Pac-10 uh, offensive freshman of the year, not rookie of the year. You've learned. Freshman Very of the good. Year. Yes, I learned something. Okay, uh, we want to thank uh, Michael Lev for all he's done uh, for Trojan Talk. He's been great all year, giving us insight. That's going to do it for Trojan Talk. I'm Jonathan Camus. Thanks for watching. For all your latest USC information, be sure to check out usc.ocregister.com.